and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to learn what a toString is, right? And let's do it now. So first, before we go right into it, let me just run our um, current version, not our current, but our future version. So if I run that, we we'll see that, there we go. So you see that this new text, as soon as this sprite hits the ground, it will display some number, but this number is not random. It is the gravity, the current value of the gravity of the object that is falling. And when I said it's not random, I wasn't particularly right. And the reason for that is because if I rerun that, you see that this displays a new value from the last one. And if I run that again, you see that it's going to produce another one, which is completely different from the last one. And so basically this is the gravity, however it will be random, randomized from a minimum to a maximum value. So apart from learning what a toString is, we're also going to learn how to use a random value in Unity. So there we go. So let's delete everything that we've got right now. And let's start from scratch as we do normally. Let's delete the square, delete. And I just started a, a new project from the last one because we had just so many things in there that weren't really related uh, with each other. So that's why I just decided to start a new one for the purpose of these videos. Alright, so now let's just put our sprite there. Let's just make it a bit more reasonable in terms of size. Now let's add a new Text Mesh Pro. And where do we want to display it? Where are you currently? Yep, let's put it somewhere in here. Well, you know, let's just put it in the center. Zero, zero, there we go. Um, how is it looking? Well, there we go, it's in, the, it's in the middle. Now, okay, so first, what do we want this object to do? Well, we kind of want it to just fall, right? So in that case, we need gravity. And to, in order for us to access gravity, well, we need to add rigid body 2D, remember? And then we also, well, actually, before that, let's add a sprite. Where, ooh, well, okay, let's just add it here. Create and then sprites. Then let's just select the um, square. There we go. Uh, let's add it there. And this will just um, act as a crown, right? That is going to be hit. And you know, let's just change the color of it. Let's just make it green. Um, all right, there we go. So now, what do we also want our ground to have? Well, since we don't want to fall, right? We don't need the gravity. We don't, in fact, need anything in terms of f physics for our ground. We just want it to stay there. However, what we need is to have a surface. You know, we, we want this to act as a surface. So that means we want to add a collider, which will be just box collider, and you know, we need a 2D version of it. So when this sprite falls, we want it to stop as soon as it hits the ground. So, if we run that now, let's see what's happened. Well, okay, it didn't stop. And the reason it didn't stop is because we didn't add the collider for our sprite as well. So, we need two colliders in order for them to collide. So, let's add a collider for it as well. Now, let's rerun our game and see if it's actually going to collide. There we go. It did collide perfectly. However, our gravity scale here, which basically determines our uh, gravity, currently is... Let's delete that. Just yeah, there we go. So, yeah, basically this determines our gravity. Well, we want this to be randomized again. Now, how are we going to do that? Let's create a new sprite, uh, so a new script, which we are going to append to our sprite. And how are we going to name it? Well, let's just name it on touch. Well, I, I have already created that um, before that video. So let's delete it. So we start from scratch, delete that. There we go. I'm just going to give it a new name just in case uh, the compiler is not confused about which one I'm actually using. So let's just give it another name, which would be touch um, ground, whatever. Let's just say touch ground. Uh, let's create and add it as a component to our sprite. Now let's open it. Let's wait for it. And, and what exactly we, uh, do we want to have there? Well. We, all we want to do there is just make the gravity random 
right? We want to make the gravity randomized. However, we also want something else. And that something else is when it collides, we need to dis uh, we need to change where is it? Let me just double click on it. We need to change the, the text of this text mesh pro, right? So these are two things that we need to do uh, in this prep. Now, okay, let's just make a comment here which will basically say what we want to do. Um, this is multi-line comment, by the way. So we want to uh, randomize gravity the value and also we want to change um, text content in our text mesh pro uh, object. That's all we want to do. Let's delete that. Now let's delete the system because we, we don't need that. And let's say we want to use the TM Pro. And TM Pro basically, uh, we want to include that in, as a namespace because we want to access Text Mesh Pro. And that's what TM Pro stands for. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's move this on top of our class just so we, we're not confused. There we go. It looks a bit better now. Now, for now, let's just delete the start and update method. I think we're just going to need the start method, but. We'll just uh, initialize it again, declare it again. Now, okay, first what we want to do is be able to, when we go to first sprite, the first pyre, we want to drag the text to there so we actually can access the content of text. For example, if we want to access the text, we want to uh, be able to access it uh, within our script. And how are we going to do that? Well, we've covered that a couple of times now, which is serialize field. So we will be able to drag our text and put it as a field in our TouchGround script. Serialize field, and then we say text mesh pro GUI, and this basically is the type of text mesh pro. And text mesh pro GUI, and then we say whatever, just text one. Okay, now let's say private void start. And what do we want to say? What do we want to do in our start method? Well, we basically want to randomize the gravity value and how are we doing that it's actually not that hard uh, what we're saying is random uh, well first we, we need to create a variable right so let's create a variable here which will basically store the uh, random value when we'll just say random gravity value and by default we we'll just give it a value of zero there we go now within our start uh, method let's finally um, let's finally declare the randomized value so we'll say random gravity value equals to random dot range now just a side note here if you have by default using system here as a namespace you'll see that the compiler is going to um, the editor is going to complain about what is random and the reason it's going to complain is because random has been the um, has been declared in pod system and unity engine namespace so the compiler is not sure which random from which namespace we actually um, want to get so in this case let's remove system because we will just use the unity engine and again they will be performing different uh, they'll be performing in a different way so what's what may be valuable for unity engine won't be valuable for the system namespace okay so make sure you delete the system and all you need is the unity engine here and the tm pro of course so you say random range and if we hover over range you, you see what it uh, actually does basically it requires a minimum number oops a minimum number of uh, a maximum number and it returns a random flow number between these numbers right it makes sense now since again if we hover it requires float in both variables in both parameters so let's put 0.1 f and 1.5 f so we're starting from 0.1 to 1.5 that that will be our gravity value and that's what we're really saying Ra random gravity value and then make it equal to something from 0.1 to 1.5 something in between that's what we're really saying. However, that's not really enough because okay, we we made this we made this va uh, variable here. We are giving it a random value, and in fact, if we actually debug it, if we, if we log it and say random gravity value, 
and then let's save that go to unity let's compile and go to console and just say random value there we go save that run it and we should see a random value every single time so we got 0 0.29 let's rerun that and see if we're actually seeing something different yeah now we have 1.29 let's run for one more time and we'll see 0 0.36 okay so we are getting a random value however what we are not doing is we're not um, accessing the gravity the real gravity variable that we want to access and how do we do that well if we go back to our script we want a way to grab this component and this component is rigid body so when we grab this component we will be able to uh, to get the gravity and as you can see it's called gravity scale so um, it's actually pretty easy because unity gives us the functionality to do that and what we're saying is get component then lower than and greater than and then in here we're saying which component we want we want to get a rigid body 2d we want to get rigid body 2d here and then what we want to do is first put the parentheses after it because that's a method so we are getting the rigid body component and then we want to say dot gravity and as you can see it's uh, it's going to auto complete it for me which is gravity scale right that's what we're accessing here and when we access that what do you think we should put in there what what do we want to make the gravity scale be equal to if you said random gravity value then you would be right because this effectively is what's generating the random number and okay so now i think we've done that so now there's one way we can actually see that and that would be uh, how would that be if we run that and select first pyre and then we go to gravity scale yeah so we can see the, uh, that we are changing the gravity scale great now there's one last thing to do in our mini to do list which is change the text content in our text mesh pro object now this is actually pretty simple again um, so what when do we first when do we want to change the text when this object compiles oh sorry not compiles but uh, collides with the ground with the surface right so what we're saying is private void and then on collision enter 2d I think we have already covered this method but basically what what that is saying is when the object the current object which is the sprite collides with another object and when does it collide well when it, when two colliders face each other basically because again this has a collider this has a collider so when they face each other this method is going to be called now let's just debug something and say collided just so we can see when it actually collides so let's save that let's compile and let's run that and see when this hits the ground it will say collided there we go so when we when this happens we want to change the text mesh pro text and how are we doing that well again we we actually require a field which will be of text mesh pro uh you gui which basically is the text mesh pro so if we go to first pyre scroll down where our uh, script is and then we drag and drop our text component into there our tech uh, text mesh prop component in there then what we only need to say is text one and then what we want to say well dot text because that's the field that we're accessing which is if we go to text that's 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 the field that we're accessing text and we want that to be equal to what well we want that to be equal to the gravity the current gravity value of our object and then what do you think we should say here what we should say here is random gravity value oops not that one but random gravity value because that's the random gravity value that we're generating every single time and that we're setting the gravity to be equal to that however as you can see here it's complaining it's saying cannot implicitly convert type float to string and the reason for that is because this top dot text requires a string so if we said uh, that's a string you know that would be valid because that's a string right however this is a float it would be the same thing as saying 1.5 f which is not a string 
and that's where toString comes into play. We have to say toString, and that's all we have to actually say. It's pretty clear, right? It's basically saying, give me whatever type you have here and convert it to string. So now, let's say that random uh, gravity value was 1.5f. When we say random gravity value dot to string, now it will be equal to 1.5f, which means we can assign it to the text component of our um, to the text field of our text on object, which is a text mesh pro object. Now, if I save it, let's see if it's actually going to work. Oh, we are missing something. Uh, oops, nothing is happening. Okay, there we go. I don't know what happened, but there we go. It's changed the the round of the text mesh pro and let's see if it actually changed the correct uh, if it's actually changed it to the correct value of the gravity so if we go to first part which we all uh, which we have already selected and go to the gravity you'll see that it's 0 0.6656287 and that's the same as here, as here which is 0 0.6656287 let's just have one more try just we're completely sure that it's running right and that there we go 0 0.78 0 0.78 so that'll be it for today's video guys i hope you enjoy enjoy that and see you on the next video